Now, earlier we were able to talk to His Excellency Jaroslav Szypanskiewicz, the Charge d'Affaires in the Embassy of Poland in Manila, and he discussed the opening of Poland's economy, plus many more. Let's take a look. You know, the, the, the data, when they are provided without the context, and, uh, they're sometimes, you know, misleading the mm -hmm. reader. Mm -hmm. because, because, in fact, you know, how you are um, tackling the issue of the COVID is um, at least a uh, few factors. It means one, it's uh, how many people died, okay. how many people are in hospital, okay. how many people uh, are infected, but it doesn't mean that they are symptomatic. They seem most of them contribute to the herd immunity. Mm -hmm. And the next factor is uh, uh, progress in vaccination and release in the quarantine regime. And so uh, if you put everything inside, so quite uh, we are well. Uh, so as you said, uh, the cases are dropping. Our um, uh, you know, healthcare system is uh, resisting in terms of the beds and availability for the sick people. Mm -hmm. We are uh, moving very strongly into the vaccination. I already got my vaccination <laughs> in Poland. In so, Poland? Oh, okay. Yes. So we are close to 30% of people vaccinated um, with the authorized in, po in Poland uh, vaccines. It means it's AstraZeneca, Johnson, Johnson and Johnson, uh, Moderna and Pfizer. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as a European Union, I think that we are quite good because the recent data from a few days ago for uh, one, 100 people mm -hmm. there is uh, 115 vaccinated it means that we are already going to the second bunch of vaccines mm -hmm. and according to the schem schematics in graphs we will be i would say essentially vaccinated in, in august so whole population so we will get this so-called herd immunity as with the vaccination and with the people that uh, passed already COVID. It means that it's a practical end of the quarantine regime in Poland. So now uh, mm. from the, I think in the beginning of this week, we released the quarantine. Uh, uh, so it means that you are not uh, carrying masks only still in restaurants, so slowly everything is open, uh, shops, uh, theaters, so the, uh, everything is going to normality. We are now, um, as a European Union, uh, uh, we are, people may almost freely travel uh, uh, with the what we call the green passport, yes. and uh, it's still um, impl full implementation is still ongoing. Yes, because if you are vaccinated, uh, I have QR code, and I go to the you know airport. I just pass my QR code. It's mm -hmm. written, for example, in. Spain, so they know that I am vaccinated, for example, with the Pfizer. Yes. And it means that I am not going to the quarantine, into yeah. the quarantine as in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> so this is slowly we, we are getting out of the COVID. I, I am quite optimistic and the new data with the arrival, you know, massive arrival of the vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, makes me optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, we, we shortly, in two, three months, uh, the, the story will be ended as a you know, burden for ordinary people. Of course, there will be some COVID there and there, but mm -hmm. we will not face this, case, uh, this um, uh, phenomenon that we call the waves. <laughs> So uh, you, you mentioned about that green passport. Can you tell me more about this, sir? As we 
with the uh, green passport, are we seeing uh, uh, a promising reopening in the coming weeks? And uh, what is the present status of uh, travel restrictions over there in uh, Poland? Border shutdowns, are they going to ease up a bit? It's, you, you know, from, from the people coming from the outside of the European Union is quite different. Mm -hmm. But at least we now implementing this green passport. That is mainly this QR. Mm -hmm. The QR code is if you are, for example, um, mm -hmm. vaccinated with one shot. It's for a Johnson and Johnson, and with a two shots with the uh, rest of the vaccine that are authorized in um, in the, in your country. So it means that you may freely travel. The problem is when the people are vaccinated with the, the vaccine that is not authorized, not by the European Union or by national um, authorities. Um, I think that you know what I mean. It's mainly it's concerns some uh, Sinovac and uh, Sputnik vaccines. Mm. That there is a lot of doubt about efficiency of this uh, vaccines and uh, a human reaction on uh, on these vaccines that may uh, vary uh, according to the individual persons. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of the obstacle. So uh, uh, the the risk the risk is that if someone is vaccinated with the unauthorized in Europe vaccines, he must pass through the whole quarantine. So this is, and of course, recognition of uh, uh, bilateral, uh, the, the, the green passes, it means this QR codes, yes. it's separate question. At it. Uh, so what I know, it's about how we manage in, internally in the in European Union and uh, um, uh, you know, having this body uh, as European Commission to coordinate the efforts of member states, it's helping to have unified mm -hmm. system because the, this institution is working how to unify the system and allow um, expression of the one of the most important uh, elements of the European Union, that it's free movement of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, talk about travel. Uh, on the side, airlines, particularly national carriers, have suffered losses due to uh, shutdowns and travel restrictions. May I ask how the national carrier of Poland is coping? <laughs> Yes, no, you know, it's, uh, the, this company are struggling. Of course, they are supported by the states and the European Commission mm -hmm. is giving the green light for a state aid to, the, to these companies. But um, as you see, of course, the companies were hard mm -hmm. by the COVID. And, uh, uh, and what we feel is an increase of price of the ticket. Sometimes it's twice, and uh, in terms of the people to people, uh, you know, relation is very bad. Mm -hmm. So it means it's uh, hurting the tourism, and the tourism is very important for the Philippines as a pro perspective business um, uh, on the line uh, on uh, on the archipelago. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the one problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, this uh, it's not so, I would say, I don't know the detailed um, data, but um, um, uh, uh, airlines try to compensate it. Mm -hmm. And it means that they, they are taking, even if in terms of the people, flights are uh, sometimes empty. I, I fly such uh, flights that we were 10 people and the big Airbus, Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a cargo, and the prices of the cargo tripled. Mm. So, uh, so the companies tried to com compensate to use the the ordinary carrier as a cargo carrier. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and compensate the, the, the loss in terms of the number of people um, traveling and the frequency of flights. So this is an, another factor, but it, of course it, it has a bad effect in terms of the uh, rising the price of the different products that are uh, carried by the airplane, uh, airplanes. So this is the, for a consumer, negative uh, element. So there is, I would say that there is no winners in this, in this story. So, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, airlines have been transformed into, most most airlines, yeah, have been transformed into cargo carriers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But uh, I, on the topic of business and trade, trade relations between our two countries, if I'm, if I'm uh, right, Poland's, uh, Poland ex exports dairy, products, mechanical equipment, paper here in the Philippines, while we export to Poland electronics. And we also have a growing um, Philippine furniture market over there. Has the pandemic uh, affected our trade relations? That uh, Yes, because the in international chains of cooperation uh, are partially broken or damaged. Mm -hmm. So there is a disturbance in the flow of the, even if something is produced in the Philippines to be exported to Poland, but some parts are coming from another country to mm -hmm. construct it. So it means this whole chain of the uh, interdependence are shaking. So I am sure that it will, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it is affecting, but it will affect it. But generally, to 2020, our um, uh, our turnover turnover balance with the Philippines tripled. Mm -hmm. So we were on the um, on the we were going up with everything. Uh, so the jump is very essential, and uh, I would say it's. I'm, I'm very, let's say, worried about the COVID effect because it, it's already both economies and economies, economies, economies of every country are hurt by this. So I think that at least we will have it this year frozen or smaller. I don't expect any kind uh, of the growth in, in some uh, Sectors, yes, with the airplanes and helicopters, it will increase because we are provided of the um, Black, Hawk, Black Hawk helicopters S-70I mm. uh, to the Filipino Air Forces. So this will flow because there is a priority, you know, from the for, for the Filipinos to get this machine as uh, faster as is possible, you know, from Poland. And I think at the end of this month, five uh, helicopters will arrive in the big canton of, you know. So if you want to know how the helicopters are born, so they are not born in the factories, they are just going out from the belly of the big plane. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, and this um, birth ceremony, I think that usually is uh, happening in Clark, so <laughs> Clark <laughs> <our> Airport. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, also, Poland and the Philippines has a uh, healthy cultural exchange. This, in terms of film, in terms of uh, books, paintings. How are our cultural relations during this pandemic? Do, do, you have any, uh, do you have any virtual alternative sections where we show or discuss the arts? Or uh, have our relations moved into Zooming now? <laughs> you know, art is um, a cultural cooperation is something um, um, uh, that it's missing from my point uh, from uh, in bilater bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are, uh, but it's not the, uh, uh, the level that I uh, want. Mm -hmm. 
to have. Mm -hmm. uh, so we as the embassy, uh, now we are engaging the, the mainly chat with the, the students exchange. So uh, to have this exchange, because the, uh, the, the exchange of the students are uh, out of this quarantine system. It's a little bit the same situation as, as with the businessmen. So they may freely travel and there is no special obstacles, you know, to, to, to have a, a Filipino students in Poland. And so this we want to, we want to go for because it's not only, uh, you know, about students, it's, uh, it's as well about knowing the countries. It means something we, are, we were not really present till the Marcos decree about allow, when he allows, allowed um, uh, direct contacts in business mm. uh, uh, between both countries, because the problem was the Philippines were strongly anti-communist country and we were under the, let's say, occupation of the communist Russia at that time. So the, the both blo blocks were, uh, you know, cut by the iron curtain. Yes. Iron curtain. So there, there was, uh, I would say, the exchange and people-to-people -people contacts were very, very limited. So it means that uh, we still need to know each other, even if the Polish embassy Operating is operating is from more than one year. So, but uh, tackling the issue of the image, it's uh, uh, quite uh, it's a complicated uh, operation. So, the culture is playing important role. So, we we want to do it. We have in plans. Yes. Um, part of our operation now moved into the. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, the yes. ordinary uh, social um, communication media. Mm -hmm. And part of our activities is uh, inside uh, of the, or with the European Union, when we are going all together and uh, we are presenting the, let's say, European culture. But, uh, you know, the, the using the word European culture is sometimes misleading. Because the Europe is a continent that is probably most diversified culturally. Of course, there are some elements and they are very important that are common for us. Because all, all of us, we pass the same, uh, you know, cultural, philosophical uh, epochs. So this epochs was lived differently in different countries, but they, they were there. So we adhered from the very old time to the same values, and we called them in European Union shared values. Mm -hmm. So this European Union operations is about the shared values, yes. and in the same time to show um, a difference, a different way, I, I would say, pers via the culture, perceiving the reality, the shared values, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, uh, so it means that our movies or our paintings, we understand perfectly. We know what is behind because we know the shared values. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're amused by a, a different approach to these common values uh, from the different countries, European countries. But is a... It's making our richness, I would say. Yeah, it's true. helping to develop uh, our own perspective mm -hmm. uh, of the world and uh, our heritage. Let's uh, go to another topic now with regards to the Filipinos in Poland. How are they? How many Filipinos are there in Poland? Uh, not, not much. I think that... My guess is that this year we will have the 3,000 okay. around something uh, because we had 
1,700, according to the statistics, something around, I don't remember them very well, mm -hmm. but looking at the uh, volume of the visas that we deliver uh, in the consulate, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we will uh, deliver at, le at least um, 1,000 visa uh, for the uh, Filipino uh, overseas workers. And according um, previous calculations, it, we were calculating that it can go even to per year to 20,000, mm -hmm. but COVID stopped it. Mm. It means we are not facing uh, such a uh, huge uh, amount of people, uh, you know, storming the consulate uh, because of the COVID. And so the, 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 there is a less than, than we expected, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because the problem of traveling in the Philippines, so the people can't reach the consulate frankly speaking, or, um, and it's complicated. It's much more easy for the people or that are in Luzon or uh, in uh, Cebu, Mindanao, where you have uh, international airports and the connection is possible, you know, uh, without, you know, big troubles. So, but uh, uh, we are prepared. Uh, for increase uh, of the application. Starting from the next month, month, we open in Makati Visa Center. That is, they will be outsourcing a part of the operation with Visa. And, it, uh, and we are doing it to, to face it, to be prepared for, uh, uh, you know, to flow huge amount uh, uh, visa applica uh, applications to to the consulate. So for this, we are prepared, and we know that will increase. Um, it's uh, from one part. It's uh, uh, there is a pressure inside of the Filipino society to go abroad because it's it was already before the COVID, but now COVID brought the people at home, mm. so they don't. Uh, with the massive return of uh, Filipino workers to, to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. and, and the second factor is that Poland is, uh, I think, one of the best countries in the Europe in terms of the economic development. So even if, it, if our economy is slowing, but we are the best in the European Union in terms of the how we are economically we are tackling the issue of the COVID. It means that literally we have no unemployment yes. and we need a uh, working force. Uh, so uh, there is a, on this issue we have uh, you know need from the Polish side and as well need from the Filipino side. So win-win solution. True. How long have you been here in the Philippines, sir? Three years. Three years? How has it been? <laughs> Are you enjoying it? <laughs> Even with the pandemic, how, how is it, Miss Paula? Well, sure. You know, the first uh, two years, it was building the embassy. So there is a lot of, it was a huge challenge uh, to, to make it. Uh, the main problem, are, uh, you know, standards that are uh, uh, building embassy. It's under the special standards. So we need some solution that uh, are accepted, but our higher standards. And this is this kind of the standards. Uh, the knowledge in the Philippines is not up. So we needed to work hard to to find a solution how to build it according to the standards. Uh, so, can I ask how, what are the similarities? Are there any similarities between, you know, Filipinos and uh, Polish uh, in, in our culture, in our attitudes or... You want Frank answer? Yes. You want, 
Of course. <laughs> I, in some sense, I don't consider Fili the Philippines as a part of Asia. I, I, it's much more about Western culture. It's oh. ma much more the story of, uh, uh, you know, 300 years of the Spanish uh, covent and 50 years of Hollywood. <laughs> and so, so in, my, in, in my perception, uh, uh, the Filipinos are a kind of the, I would say, unique um, product of assimilation of a different cultures and a kind of the Asiatic culture, and but little different in Thailand or in Vietnam because it's in here it's much more based on barangay culture, old barangay. So mm -hmm. the, the small warlords controlling a part of the land and distributing the favors, you know, <laughs> and expecting a kind of the loyalty for the, uh, for the favors given to the subjects. Mm -hmm. And it was this kind of the history. And of course, you have uh, this huge heritage uh, and the colonial past. Mm -hmm. Even if you are talking about the barangay, it was as well in, in one period, it's quite colonial. Mm -hmm. so it yeah. came from the southern invader, uh, but Asian. I would say with Europeans, it, was, uh, it is much more clear. And I think the still Filipinos are fighting with this heritage as well as with the American heritage. Mm -hmm. But even if you are speaking in English, it means <laughs> the, the American heritage, your books, your movies are in English <laughs> often. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's a part of... Uh, of the culture and with the Spanish culture, of course, um, the Catholicism is a part of the um, Filipino and Polish culture. Uh, you know very well that the John Paul II Polish pop is very popular in the Philippines, mm -hmm. very admired. Uh, he three times visited Philippines. It uh, means that it was important for him. One was a private visit, the only other stopped in Manila. Uh, but twice uh, he ran official visit in the Philippines with the biggest mass in the, let's say, in the history of the Christianity, 10, millions, 10 million people um, at Rizal Park. So it is something very, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. Ama amazing, uh, because we in Poland, we have one million, you know, for a mass. You go to 10 millions, it means uh, the, uh, a, a, kind, a kind important uh, uh, difference and similarity. And second thing is that for this reason, the, uh, we, big part of Poles and the bigger part of the Philippines, they consider the Christianity as a part of the national culture. It's, it's inside, I would say. And even if you are for or you are against for the some reason, it's always the point of reference. You're always, you know, rotating uh, around this issue. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the same is, I think, in the Poland, that's uh, making us and the Filipinos different for a man, from many countries that were previously Christians, but now they are considering Christianity a kind, uh, like a kind of the product in supermarket. So it's not a part of identity, but it's something to be grabbed or left, you know, so as a product of consumption. And it's treated a little bit like this and from the legal point of view as well, uh, and in dead countries. So the, this Christian heritage is important because it's, um, it's uh, uh, I would say, it it's making um, common um, ground for attitude to such issue as a death penalty. Mm 
Mm -hmm. As a Christian, we will say no. I know that it's an issue now in the Philippines, probably. I hope that it will be not a movement, mm -hmm. especially in direction to introduction of the death penalty in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So for abortion, for some issues when the human life is involved, I think with the Philippines, with the Filipino society, we have the same approach. Uh, so it's it's well it's as well about the dignity, you know, human dignity and uh, respect, tolerance, things like that that are uh, you know root to be there. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes, you were also talking about the culture earlier of the Philippines. Uh, yes, we do have also a very uh, celebratory culture. We always have a reason to celebrate, be it exam, birthday, whatever, graduation. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was an exciting uh, culture and historical stride through the history of Poland and the Philippines. And I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Charjay, the fair. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, do you have any last message for our um, Filipino friends who are watching you right now? I think uh, on, only one. Uh, be proud, Filipino, of your national culture. Don't look for American culture as a uh, uh, future and say this is the old way, this is the parent to waves, and we don't want it, we want to be modern and so on. We already passed this period and uh, so we are now, I think that we are proud. Fall culture, everything. Now it's a part. So as well embrace your um, history fully, not, not look only to a kind of the legendary, you know, story of Lapulat. It's not true. It's um, it's blurring the whole history of the Philippines and the complex complexity complexity of uh, to be Filipino. So uh, study the history, try to understand your culture, and be proud of it. Mm -hmm. You are unique. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to see you again and speak to you again, sir. Very, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Salamat. We'll be right back.